Good evening. I'm hereby calling to order the April 12th special meeting in the Mayfield Heights City Council. Lisa, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Balestria? Present. Mr. DeJohn? Here. Mrs. Finney? Here. Mr. Mano? Here. Mrs. Sabetta? Here. Mrs. Snyder? Here. Mrs. Dressy? Here. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. the purpose of this meeting the special meeting was to um, work on two items on our agenda uh, especially table resolution 2018-15 and I just wanted to mention that with regard to the contract with Melmac communication it has been pointed out that Melmac communications will not be receiving the entire amount of the contract and I think the mayor will talk a little bit about more about it but there are specific line items spelled out in the contract such as direct mailing graphic design citywide tel teletown hall events, social media management, and online ads. These items will be handled by third-party companies. Since the time frame will be much shorter than that was I'm sorry, proposed, the amount of work actually performed by them will be considerably less. We will only be paying for work that is completed, meaning the amount will be less than projected. I think Mr. Murphy um, left us all also a memo in regards to this and I think we received an email also. Mayor, would you like to speak a little further on this? Oh, okay, can I have a motion first to take off um, resolution 2018-15 off the table? So moved. Moved by Mr. Balestria. Second. Seconded by Mrs. Sabetta. Roll call, please. Mr. Mano. Mr. Balestria? Yes. Mr. Dijan? No. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Tressy? No. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Four to three. So it stays on the table then? No, no, no. Oh, you can come off. Okay. I always get confused on the. Okay. Okay, so is there a motion to approve, please? Moved by Mrs. Sabetta? Seconded by Mr. Balestria. Okay, Mayor, discussion, please. Thank you. Um, I know we've had a lot of discussion um, about this contract and about the uh, the proposal. Um, I just I know there's a couple things um, I would just like to point out. Um, uh, there's been talk about the general fund and where these funds. Uh, additional revenue would go. As a matter of fact, the gentleman who uh, brought it up is here this evening. I'm glad um, he is here. Um, he expressed some kind of um, you know, uh, reluctance maybe to put it in the general fund. And I think the general fund has maybe been, um, it's been misconstrued as to what the general fund is. We only have one general fund. Um, all of our proceeds uh, from all the money we receive goes into one fund, and that is the general fund. Um, so, um, you know, the statement was made that uh, maybe you weren't comfortable with $5 million going into the general fund. Well, approximately $20 million goes into that fund a year uh, and then is uh, distributed as council sees fit. Uh, once the budget is uh, finalized. So I just kind of wanted to clear up, I think, that misconception, or maybe there's uh, a perception that there are multiple funds that the city has, and, um, but that's just not the case. Um, and the second thing is, um, you know, we did talk about this at a committee of the whole meeting, <coughs> excuse me, um, with all of council um, in 2016, um, and, uh, you know, there was no, um, no one expressed uh, any qualms with using uh, Malamed Communications then. Um, the reason why the contract uh, or the program was not instituted then was because the time frame was too short uh, to, um, to really institute the program and get it going to get it on the ballot. Um, so um, the, uh, election deadline, which is looming again, uh, to get it on the ballot, uh, which is uh, 90 days before the election. Um, again, um, 
that's I think a reason for this meeting to kind of uh, uh, to get moving on this project so we are facing some uh, serious time crunches here so I just wanted to point those I think there's a couple misconceptions there that I wanted to uh, clarify thank you mayor is there any further discussion mr. Mano two things <clears throat> two points first of all when this contract was first dis discussed at the committee the whole meeting uh, the, the contract was rejected at that point okay uh, the second thing is um, early on in discussion I had made a comment about um, using ballot language to um, put this on that ballot for the voters to decide what they wanted to do when when this whole concept first came around I said the only way I would support it would be if the ballot language read that the money would be used for infrastructure and to further this city, a new swimming pool, whatever, whatever we needed to do. But I did not want one dime of this money to be utilized for wages or benefits. That's the point about this money going into that general fund without any kind of an earmark because now that money can be used for benefits and wages at the next cycle of pay raises and that was that was the main sticking point and that's why I said at that time I would not support this thing if those two items were not in there and that's why I've been so adamant about not supporting it I think I've, I've had a lot of phone calls from people and quite frankly they feel their intelligence is being insulted that they have to pay their tax dollars to have somebody explain to them why they have to vote for a tax increase so that's that's where I stand on this thing and again this was rejected the first time around so we'll see where it goes from here tonight that's all I have to say mrs. Tressy thank you madam chairman I also had some phone calls from residents um, regarding um, putting this on the ballot and hiring mr. Malamed um, the residents had said why can't it just go to the ballot and we can say yes or no why do we have to have a contract um, prior to mr. Malam and you know then mr. Malamed educating them they the couple people that called me said they felt that they were well educated enough to know if they wanted to vote on any issue besides this issue that they didn't need to be um, schooled so that was one comment and my other comment is that this was rejected there were five votes that said no in 2016 when this first came up so council did not want to do this at the time and yet here we are today um, with everybody you know jumping ship and saying they want to do it and um, <clears throat> my other comment has to do with the, um, the change of contract it's so amazing that we can change the contract within 48 hours where Monday night it was at our regular council meeting um, we would not take it off the table and yet here we are between Monday and today we were able to get the contract reduced we were able to reduce a, a teleconference we were able to reduce all these costs my question would be why didn't we go to Mr. Malamed um, when we first rejected it two months ago and ask for something less expensive than what we were um, going to sign on we were going to sign on 48 7 but in 48 hours we're going to reduce all those expenses and that should make it all better so I don't think it does and I think that we've insulted the residents by thinking that they need to be educated to use this company that's my comment thank you thank you mrs. Teresi um, mrs. Snyder Yes, I just wanted to um, make a couple comments as well. First of all, I don't think we're insulting. Some of the residents might feel that way, but when anybody runs a campaign, we know nothing about the person that's running. So a lot of times we have to do our own campaign literature and we have to do mailers, we have to walk and go door to door to introduce ourselves to the people so they know who we are. And we all, it's all of us that sit up here know how much money it costs to do a mailer 
We know how much it costs to run a campaign ourselves, and the public and anybody here can look up on the Board of Elections how much each of us char or co how much it costs us to run the campaign. So part of what I think we're paying for is someone to help us get that going. I will tell you myself that I have had phone calls as well, and I will tell you that I've spent half an hour, 45 minutes, 15 minutes, to one, two, three people in the course of uh, you know two hours. I could never personally get to 20,000 residents to explain this tax to them. And the other thing is, is when people do approach me and ask me about the tax increase, they're very upset because they don't want to pay more taxes. But once I explain to them why we, we're doing this and it's not really going to affect them, what's the percentage, 75% it won't affect, 72%, um, um, they're like, oh, that's a no-brainer then. But I think every member of council wants what, what Mr. Mano, Mrs. Tressy, what we're all talking about, a new pool, earmark the money to, towards the, the, the road program, which is huge, a huge undertaking. We all want the same things for our, our city. But there's no, we can talk to our finance director. We can't find this money. I mean, the pool is still, still the same pool that I swam in when I was a little kid. We know the problems that we face with the pool in the park and we see our roads, we drive on them every day. But if we don't have any revenue coming in to help us pay for this, these items, it'll never happen. And it'll be the same pool 20 years from now. And I think that's a service that we offer our residents is our parks, is one of the biggest things people come here for. Not just all the other things, but that's very important. The only way to get this done is to have someone help us get this ball rolling. I have the deadline date of um, August 8th is the date that we need to file so that it will be on the November ballot. And out of the courtesy of other council people that were running last year, we didn't put it on the ballot because it would be too challenging to run a campaign and to talk about this tax increase. So I, that's my feeling. I think that if we want to see these changes in our city, we have to find the money to do it. It's not too hard. No one wants to see our tax. I will be affected by it because I work and live in the same city. So it will affect me. But it's it's what's right for the city and that's what I have to say sorry thank you mrs. Snyder um, I like to just make a quick comment and before anyone else just on mrs. Snyder's note and mrs. Teresi's I had worked for many many years on school levies I from the time I was probably 18 and moved into Mayfield the library the swimming pool and this is the protocol of how it works I mean you know, depending on what company you hire you hire a company to come in to help you and train you, which is what they're going to do. But I don't know if anyone understands that subsequently it's going to be the residents running this, the residents that are going to have to go out there and work the city and have this. And I had a real eye-opener because I hadn't been to a public works um, meeting in a couple of years. And, I, you know, I look over the roads that need work, but just sitting there and listening and I have to tell the residents, there's roads out there that really, we need to up that program. Add a few more roads each year on there so we could catch up. Because it's getting to the point now where we're, we're throwing up, uh, uh, tossing a coin over which are worse. So we really need this money. We need a new pool and we have great ideas. I know Mrs. Snyder is really in favor of a um, water park. Uh, a sprinkler water park which is not expensive I know Middlefield was able to do that for practically nothing so I think this is very important so I just wanted to say that this is not an unfamiliar thing to hire a company like this and if you and I'm sure um, if you if you've been to any school board meetings or any other communities every community and every school does do this here that I know of anybody else have anything to add Mrs. Um, Sabetta thank you madam chairman I would like to say that when we did start in 2016 to look at revenue enhancement, this was the way to do it. Mayfield Heights has a 1% income tax rate. We've had it since 1966. Now we're only asking for a half percent to be added. There isn't a city near us or around us that has 1.5% rate. This is something that in the future that we don't want to come back and say we were sorry we didn't do. You are the voters. You would be voting on this. For us to get out there 
the way to do it is with a reputable company that has done it before. And that's where Malamid came in. Now, we have been speaking about this, and I will say what the mayor said. We did vote on this once because the reason we brought it to a committee of the whole after thinking was that we were unsure of the timing. And I am sure that one of these minutes says it many times. We went down to a month and a half for $21,200. That was the last. What they could get done in a month and a half is not what we should be giving our residents. We should be giving them what they deserve, and that is the education of why we need this, why we want you to understand why we're asking you to vote for it, and that what it would do for you to benefit you. This is our job up here. This is a hard pill to swallow right now. We all live here. We're residents here. We have been putting the pool, patching it for four years and beyond. And we have been warned by the service and the parks that the pool isn't going to make it. What we're trying to do is give you the city that you want to live in and the city that we want to live in. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sabetta. Mr. DeJohn? Uh, thank you, Madam President. I'll keep my uh, comments uh, short. First of all, I think uh, the employees at the City of Mayfield Heights could easily market this program rather than pay the kind of money that M Malamed wants. Um, I also think that when this money goes into the general fund, uh, the unions, at, at the time of negotiations, they look at our revenue that's uh, coming in, and then they want a piece of that. Um, and we could see this uh, by the last couple raises. Uh, we had a 9% raise for 2015, 16, and 17. And now we have another 8.5% for 18, 19, and 20 for two of our unions. And other, other unions haven't uh, been settled yet. So I'm just saying that I, I think the residents are smart. I think, uh, and, and just one last comment. Uh, we, we uh, had for two years that breakfast in the morning at the community center, which as a council, just the council people marketed that. And we marketed it hard, we sent out mailers, and yet we had very, very few people come there. So now we're gonna have Malamed Communications do the same thing with this tax increase. We're gonna pay him for something, and maybe only a handful of residents will show up. And that's really, to me, it's a waste of money. I mean, I think we can do this. I think, uh, you know, we have people that work in the city hall that have, have advanced degrees. They could easily do that and have marketing degrees. So, thank you. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. DeJohn. Um, Mr. Balistria, you haven't spoken. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, I do. Uh, education, first of all, education is never insulting. Many, money spent on education to get to an ends by which the city will benefit as a whole is money that will not be wasted. And the language on the ballot to airmark something is critical. Uh, infrastructure is a very vague term. I looked it up in the dictionary. I responded to some emails from residents who said, you know, just that. Well, why don't we just airmark it for infrastructure? Infrastructure basically means buildings, roads, bridges, and power. It would not include the parks. It would not include the pool. It would not include the fact that one of, one of our corporations left the city and we lost an, in, an income tax revenue of a million dollars or more if it was one of our big corporations. We couldn't su supply those dollars to help the city if some, a situation in an emergency situation type, of, type like that were to happen. Any dollars that's earmarked in year one has to be utilized in year two, in year three, in year four, and every subsequent year. It's ludicrous to do that. Okay, the reason being, if you say we're gonna earmark this money for a pool, guess what, in year two, if the city were to bring in $5 million, monies have to be utilized for the pool and the pool only. If you say it's for infrastructure, it's for roads, buildings, bridges, and power, okay, by, by definition. 
Now, if you want to include parks, if you want to include ball fields, if you want to include every little facet that could happen to a city, that would have to be, all the language would have to be included on the ballot, and it would have to be all-inclusive, which I think is ridiculous, since this council controls the purse strings. We determine where all monies are spent by vote of this council, your representatives. So if, if per se, someone doesn't want to use it for, the, for a certain, they have a vote. They're your, they're your vote. So I think everything needs to go in a general fund, the way every city is run, and I think everything needs to be closely looked at. We have a lot of good people here that look over the finances. We've got great credit ratings. We've got great reports of how we spend our money in the city. Nothing is spent frivolously, and I think this city does a good job of what is entrusted to us. And that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Balistria. Lisa, could I have a roll call, please? I'd like to make a motion for further discussion, please. I'll second it. <clears throat> okay, there's a motion on the table for further discussion. Um, what do I do? I, do I roll call? Or? We have a first by Mr. DeJohn, second by Mr. Mano. Could I have a roll call, please? Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mrs. Teresi? Yes. Mr. Balistria? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. You could have just asked to speak again. <laughs> Thought we were done. Go ahead. Point of order? Yep. I mean, everybody has spoken once. Right. Just by Robert's rules, everybody's allowed to speak one more time. I understand. Thank you. That is correct. And thank you, Mr. Ballastry, for that. <laughs> thank you. Mr. John, please. Could you bring yeah, just one thing that Mr. Ballastry has said that uh, once it goes into the general fund, we appropriate it. But with our union contracts, it's negotiated by the mayor and his legal team. And whether we vote yes or not on those raises, they become law. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeJohn. Anyone else? Mrs. Teresi. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Also, um, back to Mr. Balistrea's comment, and I do agree with you. If you list um, all of the items that you do not want to use that money for, <coughs> it's probably a long list, or um, what you want to use it for, I apologize. But if you just list that you don't want to use it for additional salaries, um, that's only a one, one line item. We, we don't want to earmark. This money will be put in the general fund, but it will not be used for um, payroll and salaries and fringe benefits for employees. Um, just for two contracts, police and fire, for those three years, it's $1,225,000. We still have plenty of unions to go, which means it could be another million or more that we're going to pay for salaries. When we have the $5 million, um, I, I think we'll see it'll be a slippery slope and the money will go to that. We all want a pool. We all want a park system. I mean, th that is what is going to attract young people to this community, is to have a park and to have a nice city, nice roads. But over the years, the city has had plenty of unencumbered funds in the bank. And we've never fixed, we've never gone all out to fix these roads all these years. All of a sudden, we've had, we had a five-year road program, and today I understand it's a 10-year road program. Why weren't we doing more roads over the years when we really had more revenue than we had expense. Now we have more expenses than we have revenue because of losing state and federal money. But why weren't, when we had the money, why weren't we fixing the roads then? So now the roads are a giant issue because it went from a couple roads to a lot of roads. And now we have a pool that's 57 years old that we've been patching for years. We've never, um, thought about replacing it up until now. And we've had plenty of money. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Teresi. Um, anybody else uh, in the end? Mr. Trivi, I don't, you're our finance guy. So, I mean, is what we're saying wrong about earmarking things and general funding? And I mean, you're the one that tells us where things should be. 
Well, the problem with earmarking is obviously what uh, Mr. Palestria said. If you have situations that can develop in future years where there is a sudden drop in our revenue due to uh, an employer leaving town or things of that nature, then you cannot use it for any other purpose but capital improvements. Why would you want to tie your hands in the future if that were to happen? Obviously, we are talking about using this additional funds for capital, and that's the way it would be planned and appropriated. Uh, why the concern is it's going to be used for salaries, I, I'm not really sure why it's, uh, that's a problem. But one of the things that uh, uh, the revised code, not the city ordinances, but the revised code requires, most general revenue, I use the term general revenue, all tax sources, fees, things of that nature, must go into the general fund. That's the law. Now, there are certain types of revenue uh, by state law that must be earmarked for road improvements, like gas taxes, license fees. They must go into the what we call the road fund. It's a special revenue fund to manage and use those revenues for only one purpose. There's other types of revenue that must go into a, a bond fund if you're paying off debt. Some of the property tax in the past was required to be put into the general bond retirement fund, not the general fund, to pay off the debt that you might have. We issued notes this year for $4 million. Uh, we have to pay that back over time. So there will be money that will have to be earmarked uh, and put into the bond retirement fund. Now, there's two ways of doing that. You can Part of the property tax could be levied for that purpose, and you could also supplement, if you needed, monies from the income tax into the bond retirement fund to pay off your debt. And there's other situations where the specific types of revenue must go into a the non-general fund purpose, but there's very few. But getting back to the income tax, that money by law has to go into the general fund, uh, unless, of course, it's earmarked, uh, but that just ties your hands in the future for things you don't anticipate at this point in time. Yeah, right now we're in good financial shape, but uh, the types of uh, revenues that we need to do these road programs, build a pool, build a new pool. I went swimming in that pool too. <laughs> Think about that for a minute. Not the fact that I went swimming, but never mind. Uh, it's something that uh, you need to be have some flexibility, and I can't emphasize more. The city council appropriates and approves the budget. If there's a, something in that budget that's submitted that they don't agree with, they don't approve it. They request it to be amended uh, and something taken out of a particular appropriation line item so that it's not paid for. The mayor, I don't have discretion to say we're going to buy this or buy that. You control that purpose. That, that's the way it is. It's in the charter. So I don't know what else I can say. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Trivi. Madam Chairman. Mr. Mano. Um, we talked about earmarks. We've talked about all the different things that tax money goes to and so on and so forth. But we're still not talking about the simple thing of wages and benefits. That's where that money should not go. And that's the sticking point. Wages and benefits. People in this city have great jobs. They are very well paid. They are paid above all the surrounding cities here. There's no reason in the world that we can't institute measures to make sure that we have the money to meet the demands of payrolls without putting this additional funding that we're asking you to pay for in that same pot. Forget about earmarks, forget about all the other stuff. Two simple things. The money can't be used for wages, it cannot be used for benefits, period. Done. Anybody else, Mr. Tribby? Just one other thing, Mr. Manor was uh, concerned about uh, personal services. In, in most governmental entities, not just Mayfield Heights, the personal service, uh, which means salaries and fringe benefits, makes up anywhere from 70 to 80% of the general fund budget. That's not just us. That, that is a 
common things in government. Schools to schools, I believe it's 75 well, to 80 it's, percent I'm sure of it is. The revenue. Uh, and what you have to remember is cities don't manufacture things and sell things and bring in funds from what you would find in private industry. It's a whole different situation. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, can we have a roll call, please? Mrs. Tressy? No. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? No. Mr. DeJan? No. Mr. Balestria? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Resolution 2018-15 has passed. And I also just want to comment if anyone's watching this or those, if you are interested in helping with this, I'm sure the mayor would love to hear from you. So call his office or email it. And we want the community to really be part of this project. Next is Ordinance 2018-12, which is third reading. Mr. Murphy. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Ordinance number 2018-12. An ordinance amending Chapter 794 of the codified ordinances of the City of Mayfield Heights regarding municipal income tax by amending Section 794.03 and, and declaring an emergency. Third reading. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Moved by Mrs. Sabata. Second. Seconded by Mr. Balistria. Is there any further discussion? I know Mr. Tribby's discussed this about, what, 25 times already? <laughs> Give or take. Give or take. Can we have a short refresh on this? Yes. Uh, the short uh, 25 words or less it has nothing to do with the tax rate in this city. It has nothing to do with anything other than meeting the requirements that the state in the, in the recent past changed the, the laws in 718 on income tax, and we must comply with what they've required us to do. And that's all I can say. And what if we don't comply? Uh, I'm not sure if there's a penalty for not doing it, but it would be a, something this the regional income tax agency has recommended we do this in order to have uniform uh, levying of, of taxes and collecting taxes. It's got nothing to do with the rate. That can only be changed by what we're talking about before, a vote. Thank doesn't you, Mr. impact Tribute. it at all. Anybody Madam else? Oh, Mr. DeJohn. Mr. Tribute, do we need this uh, for any tax increase? Is that what you're saying? No, this is just to collect the tax we already levy. Okay. If we don't do a tax increase, you still got to do this. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the Anybody clarification. Else? Okay, roll call, please, Lisa. Mr. Balistria? Yes. Mrs. Teresi? Yes. Mrs. Sabetta? Yes. Mr. DeJohn? Yes. Mrs. Snyder? Yes. Mr. Mano? Yes. Mrs. Finney? Yes. Ordinance 2018 12 is approved. There's nothing else on the agenda, so do I have a motion to adjourn? Moved, Moved by Mrs. Sabata, seconded by Mr. Balistria. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming.